Hello, I am a 50 years old woman. From a young age, I embraced a belief in reciprocity, trusting that my diligence and commitment would be equally reciprocated. This belief permeated my relationships. I was convinced that showing kindness to others would mean kindness would be returned to me. Even after I got married, I continued to uphold this principle, hoping that my considerate actions towards my husband would be mirrored by him. Back in those days, the expectations placed on women were different. We were often expected to make numerous sacrifices. I embraced these expectations wholeheartedly, dedicating myself to my husband and children, confident that these sacrifices would pave the way to a fulfilling future. However, life didn't turn out as I had hoped. Despite my tireless efforts and early mornings dedicated to my family, my work often went unappreciated. Overshadowed by complaints and overlooked mistakes, I wasn't forced into this lifestyle. I was just an ordinary person who ended up marrying a co-worker five years my senior, following the societal norms of the time. After the birth of my daughter, I left my job to become a full-time housewife, a decision I never regretted, seeing it as a natural progression for maintaining family harmony. My life wasn't like the glamorous ones depicted in TV dramas, but it was stable and manageable. That is, until my daughter reached ninth grade. It was then that tragedy struck with my mother's sudden death from a heart attack. During this period of mourning, I discovered my husband's affair. While I was enveloped in grief, he found solace in someone else, becoming distant and eventually demanding a divorce. In those days, divorce was frowned upon, and despite my husband's irresponsible and cold behavior, I was reluctant to consider it. Looking back, I realize how naive I was, but there was more at stake, especially with my daughter witnessing our crumbling marriage. Despite my efforts to avoid divorce, I found myself in a profoundly unhappy situation. During a particularly intense argument about our impending separation, my father, who had recently lost his wife and seen his daughter suffer in her marriage, came to visit. Witnessing our distress, he offered me refuge and encouraged me to leave with my daughter. This offer marked a turning point, providing a pathway out of an increasingly toxic environment and a chance to start anew, even amidst the complexities of my life's unexpected turns. My father helped me see that persisting in a challenging marriage was futile. Overwhelmed by his worry and understanding, I agreed to my husband's request for a divorce. In the settlement, he gave me $6,000 in cash. With my father's backing, I secured a modest three-bedroom townhouse where my daughter and I could start anew. As we settled into our new life, I braced myself for the hard work ahead, especially given the societal scrutiny I anticipated as a divorced woman raising a daughter entering her teenage years. During this turbulent period, my daughter, like any adolescent, expressed her struggles and lamented the impact of our family's breakup. Despite the emotional pain, I knew I couldn't afford to dwell on the past. I was determined to provide for her, so I embarked on a journey to find stable employment. However, being an older divorced woman with a dependent child presented additional challenges in the job market. Undaunted, I took on multiple part-time jobs, worked night shifts, and even did freelance work from home when possible. As time went on, my daughter reached her senior year of high school. Despite our financial limitations, she excelled academically and found ways to flourish. Motivated by my desire to secure her future, I took a demanding job at a 24-hour restaurant, working grueling 11-hour shifts. I managed to save two-thirds of my earnings for her college tuition. Despite facing judgment and the whispers of gossip, particularly from some married men who saw me as vulnerable, I persevered for my daughter's sake. The sacrifices were many, but my goal was to afford her opportunities I never had. As she neared adulthood, I hoped she would understand and appreciate the struggles I endured to raise her and make a living. 
Reflecting on these challenges, I realized that having a daughter made my situation both more difficult and more meaningful. She became my anchor, giving me the strength to persevere through life's challenges. I held on to the belief that in the future, my grown daughter and I would reminisce about the hardships we faced together and take pride in our resilience. A year later, my daughter's excellent performance in her exams earned her admission to Harvard University a moment of immense joy and validation that made all our previous struggles seem worthwhile. As she embarked on her college journey, I felt a profound mix of pride and relief, knowing that our shared sacrifices had led to such a promising new chapter in her life. Even though I had managed to provide for her education and a stable place to live, the emptiness of our home without her daily presence was palpable. We kept in touch regularly through phone calls, and in the initial months of her newfound independence, our relationship deepened. Her affection and connection during this time were comforting, and I treasured the growth in our bond despite the challenges we faced. My daughter graduated from college without financial difficulties, a dream that we had both tirelessly worked towards achieving. I had hoped that we might live together again, but to my surprise, she secured a job at a defense corporation and decided to live independently. To support her, I took out a bank loan and helped with the down payment for a condo near her workplace. As I aged and adopted a more modest appearance, my daughter blossomed into a stylish career woman. Seeing her thrive brought me immense joy and reinforced the value of my sacrifices. I found great satisfaction in her successes, feeling the truth in the saying that people forget their own needs in moments of joy. Despite having supported her throughout her college years, the thought of her upcoming wedding presented a new financial challenge. Some questioned why I continued to struggle financially when my daughter was fully capable of supporting herself. Yet, I was determined to help with her wedding expenses to prevent any disdain from her future in-laws. The belief that my sacrifices for her happiness would bring joy to us both kept me resilient. As my daughter entered the dating world, I noticed a growing distance between us. Initially hurt, I came to understand that her adult life and relationships were rightfully taking precedence. I patiently waited for her to mature and reconnect with me, realizing that priorities naturally shift during this life phase. However, her 28th birthday was a poignant moment for me. I looked forward to celebrating together, but she informed me that she had plans with someone named Scott and downplayed any need for preparations. While she might have intended to reassure me that I needn't go to any trouble, I felt a sting of neglect. Her birthday, significant for being the day she came into this world, seemed to be just another day to her, and her apparent indifference hurt deeply. It was hard to understand why she viewed spending on her birthday as unnecessary, given our tight budget. Despite her intelligence, it seemed her grasp of her mother's feelings was still evolving. Despite my hurt, I continued to love and support her, hoping for a deeper understanding between us in the future. I knew she was my only daughter, and I longed to see her, even if just briefly on her birthday. So I decided to take a day off work. That morning I made an extra effort with my appearance before heading to her office, but what I encountered there left me reeling, an unexpected and emotionally charged situation. In the company lobby, I saw my ex-husband with his new partner, people I had hoped never to see again. How he knew to be there puzzled me. When I tried to call my daughter, she abruptly hung up, claiming she was tied up in a meeting. Feeling bewildered, I turned around, only to see my daughter cheerfully calling out to her father and embracing him warmly. Her boyfriend seemed to know my ex-husband and his wife, which intensified my feelings of betrayal and fury. It felt as if everyone had conspired against me. Drained and upset, I quickly left the scene. Reflecting on that day later, I battled with the desire to confront both my daughter and my ex-husband, but a stronger urge to escape took over. Despite the turmoil inside, I found myself unable to reach out to her. Then, unexpectedly, 
My daughter came to visit, announcing her engagement and handing me a wedding invitation. The shock deepened when I saw the names on the invitation. Though she was my daughter, I felt an intense urge to send her away. How could she, my daughter, treat me merely as a guest at her wedding? I confronted her, expressing how hurt I felt about being marginalized at such a significant event, emphasizing that I was not just a guest. I was her mother. My daughter apologized, explaining she felt trapped by the circumstances. She wanted to marry Scott, but his parents scrutinized every detail about her. This revelation made me grapple with a mix of emotions, torn between hurt and the need to understand my daughter's challenging position. During our conversation, my daughter shared her concerns about how my divorce status and our struggles as a single-parent family might negatively impact her future. She worried that being open about our past could jeopardize her relationship, as her potential in-laws might disapprove. Faced with this confession, I couldn't hide my frustration. I reminded her of all the sacrifices I had made, the hardships we had endured together, and how deeply her actions had stung. Despite everything, I strove to bridge the gap between our perspectives, hoping to find common ground where we could both feel understood and supported as she approached this life-altering decision. As I raised my daughter, working tirelessly at a restaurant to fund her education, I thought our shared struggles would strengthen our bond. However, her response during a crucial conversation stunned me. She brushed aside our past hardships, focusing instead on her future comfort. She revealed that her father and his new partner, the woman who had contributed to our family's breakdown, had already met with her future in-laws, emphasizing that the present was all that mattered to her. Feeling deeply hurt and regretful, I harshly expressed my disappointment for the first time, dismayed by her dismissive attitude. Shockingly, she retorted that if I wished to remove her from my life, I should reimburse her for the costs of raising her. This bitter exchange escalated quickly, culminating in her storming out of my home, declaring us strangers. Devastated by this rupture, I questioned the point of saving for her wedding. A deep sadness enveloped me as I stared at the wedding invitation she left behind, noting a different name printed where mine should have been. Two years later, I received distressing news. My father, who had chosen to live independently to avoid burdening me, had passed away. His death hit me hard, bringing with it a painful realization of my shortcomings as a daughter. A few months after his passing, I inherited a modest condo where he had lived, a poignant reminder of the family ties and challenges that had shaped my life. Realizing that I still had the money saved for my daughter's unused wedding, I decided it was time to start living for myself, even if it felt somewhat late in life. Reflecting on my experiences, I pondered the realization that trusting and sacrificing everything for one child might not be the most fulfilling path. It dawned on me that I should prioritize my desires and needs before it was too late to enjoy life. Amid these reflections, a real estate broker and close friend from the restaurant where I worked encouraged me to consider what I truly wanted to do, regardless of societal expectations for women to sacrifice. This conversation sparked a desire within me to break free from the conventional mold and live for myself. I harbored mixed feelings of regret and sorrow for the years of sacrifice, but also a budding hope for personal fulfillment and a new chapter in my life where my happiness was the priority. Yearning for personal fulfillment and inspired by a friend, I embarked on a journey into the real estate business. I studied auction bidding, and using some savings along with money from selling my late father's condo, I leaped into a new venture. To my surprise, I became the owner of a building in a prime location almost overnight. Eight months later, after returning from a mountain climbing adventure, I settled into the top floor of my building, which I transformed into my home. 
One evening, as I rested from my adventures, there was a knock at the door. Despite feeling exhausted, curiosity got the better of me, and I opened the door. There stood my daughter, visibly pregnant, and holding a toddler with chubby cheeks. Tears streamed down her face as she explained the turmoil in her life. Her husband had become violent and unfaithful. Now, on the verge of giving birth and needing to care for her young daughter, she sought refuge with me. Despite the shock and lingering hurt from our past conflicts, I couldn't turn away my daughter in her moment of need. She admitted she had come to me not just for shelter, but because she had heard of my success in real estate and needed financial help. She hinted at a claim to the money from the savings I had once set aside for her wedding and from my inheritance. Caught between anger and compassion, I faced a torrent of mixed emotions. My daughter's plea for help confronted me with the complexities of our relationship, woven with threads of love disappointment, and the inevitable ties of family. In the heat of the moment, I confronted her about our past, expressing my frustration. I was the one who saved for your education and your wedding. You once told me to get out of your life. Now, do I owe you money after all that? You never paid back any of the money I spent. And now it seems that in front of money, the bond between a parent and a child has no value. Now that I have money, you think you don't need a daughter, right? But no matter what, I am still your daughter, she replied, her words laced with desperation and pain. Despite everything, her words resonated with me. Understanding her vulnerability and the direness of her situation, I knew that as a mother, I could not turn her away. The tangled emotions of love, disappointment, and the inevitable bonds of family pushed me to grapple with these feelings, striving to find a way to help her despite the rocky history that shadowed our relationship. As I faced my daughter, her words stung. I have a right to your money too. I thought my success was because of your sacrifices, and I was proud to attribute my Harvard education to your efforts. But now I see that perhaps it was all in vain Maybe you were too busy making a living that you didn't teach me how to be a decent human being. I've become selfish, thinking only of myself. You're refusing to give me a penny, suggesting I should return to my husband or go to my wonderful father. How could you be so cruel? His new wife ran off with all his money, and he's disappeared trying to find her. If you abandon me, I'll be like an orphan. I have a child and another on the way. How could you turn your back on us? Would you be happy if something terrible happened to me? Her outburst overwhelmed me. In that heated moment, I couldn't tolerate her behavior any longer. Pulling out all the cash I had, I threw it at her, saying, Since you're acting so desperate, take this money. But after this, don't come back. I cannot have you walking in and out of my life as you please. It was a harsh lesson, but one I felt necessary. Your life is important, and now, so is mine. You cannot manipulate me based on your needs. I coldly asked my daughter and her child to leave. It pained me, as she was still my daughter, but her selfishness and the echoes of past grievances were too much to bear. Yet, my heart ached for my innocent granddaughter, caught up in this sad situation. After that, my daughter, too proud to face her actions, never came to see me again. Deep down, I knew this might happen. If she had come back, repentant and genuinely seeking forgiveness, perhaps I would have been conflicted. Torn between my reluctance and the desire to help her address her issues, including dealing with her wayward husband. But that scenario never unfolded. Instead, I was left to reflect on the complexities of our relationship, the pain of our separation, and the personal growth I had vowed to pursue for myself. I was deeply disappointed to realize that despite erasing me from her life to marry her husband, my daughter didn't find the happiness she sought. It left me wondering why both my husband and my daughter ended up making the choices they did, despite the difficult life I led to support them. Now, 
I see that the only person truly living the life I envision for myself is me, alone. This experience has taught me a valuable lesson I wish to share. No matter how strong your relationships may be, it's crucial to prioritize your well-being first. In a world where betrayal can come from any corner, the one person who should never betray you is yourself. Ultimately, happiness comes not from the sacrifices you make for others, but from the efforts you make to fulfill your own life. My story may seem like a tale of a life only half lived, but I am committed to filling the rest of it with experiences and joys that are solely for me. Thank you for listening to my story. I hope it brings some insight and encourages you to cherish and prioritize your happiness. I wish everyone a wonderful day filled with good fortune. Please support me by liking and subscribing, and don't hesitate to leave your wisdom and encouragement in the comments. Let's cheer each other on towards a life fully lived.